Welcome to Product Marketing Alliance. We're home to everything a product marketer needs to learn, share, and succeed in their role. The definitive product marketing course, Product Marketing Core, is the perfect platform for experienced product marketers to broaden their existing knowledge, as well as educate newcomers beginning with their product marketing journey. Our community. We're home to more than 10,000 product marketers across the world. And every single day, tons of product marketing specific conversations go down. The community hasn't just been an absolute wealth of knowledge and answers, it's the place for constant inspiration. With a PMA membership plan, everything a product marketeer could possibly need is all in there, all in one place. Whether you want to grab a template, learn about how to become more strategic from product marketeers who've mastered it, sit back and watch hundreds of hours of presentations from some of the world's most trusted brands, our packages have got it all and more. We really are, dare we say it, the one-stop shop. Hi, my name is Daniel Cooperman. I'm the head of product marketing for Duraline at Atlassian. Next, we're going to talk to you today about some product marketing plays that you can use to boost your remote work efficiency. So. I think I don't have to belabor the point that we all have felt the impact of working from home due to the pandemic for the past few months. And it impacts in terms of higher levels of stress, whether working from home with family or especially in isolation, as you can see people. Um, but when it comes to all of the things that happen over the water cooler, when you can get together with other people to do some whiteboarding exercises on an ad hoc basis, or even just uh, swivel your chair and ask people questions and get together for an impromptu meeting, all of these things are over. The remote working situation that we all are in today require a little bit of different thinking, but also requires you to have a better coordination among your team and better collaboration across other team members. Interesting to note that I think the traditional team forming phases that we are so familiar with on forming, storming, norming, and performing can now be translated to probably something that I have here on the screen on Zoom as people are trying to uh, get used to how do we collaborate, how do we become more effective when we're all working remotely um, and we have our personal lives sometimes even interfering uh, when we're trying to, to get meetings going or even work with other people. So here's what I propose to, for you to do right now. Take a, a pen and paper and start off jotting down some of the ideas I'm gonna give you, if you think they're valuable. There are three things I wanna address with you today. First of all, let's talk about establishing a good remote working culture with some team plays that you can use with your team and also cross-functionally. The first play, I call it the user manual. This is basically imagine if you came with a user manual. People, before working with you, they can just browse your manual and they can see how to best work with someone like you. So this is a great exercise to do with your entire team and also to do with people that you work across uh, functions in a day-to-day -day basis. Especially today during the pandemic, you can uh, look at things such as what are some of the times that you may have family situations or you have to take pets for a walk or take care of them that might be impacting your traditional normal working hours. Also, because of the adjustment for working from home, are there any adjustments that you're going to have to make or other team members have to make before because of working remotely? Especially if you have team members that have decided to move across the country to stay closer to family or friends, and then it changes completely their schedules. Look at also some potential disruptions due to work at home situations. I can give you a perfect example. My neighbor, every Tuesday at 10 a.m., he turns on a lawnmower. So I know that I need to avoid any very important meeting be at Tuesdays at 10 a.m. because there are noises coming from right outside my window. There might be other situations in which uh, you can you might have kids around you trying to do homework and they may come to you and ask for, for help or you have some uh, certain family members that also need help from you. But the goal here is to look through how to best work with you in today's situation. How do you best work? How should you best receive feedback? Are there particular times that you just have to break because of uh, uh, making dinner or making lunch for, for family members? So those are all important conversations to have. 
this will also open up new ways of communication and new opportunities to collaborate with other team members by better understanding what their current situation is. Another often overlooked uh, aspect of running effective teams and even running effective meetings in any situation, but especially now, is looking at virtual meeting ground rules. So this is basically looking at how can we best uh, run those meetings and what are the external factors at play? And it's interesting to discuss with your team members, like what are the best and worst times for a meeting? Um, should we all have our cameras on and off? So who is going to be keeping notes and where should we keep those notes and how do we share those notes and how do we make sure that we can collaborate? Should we be rotating? Maybe meeting hosts. If you have, let's say, stand up meetings with your teams, maybe rotate who's running those meetings. But also the other interesting thing is how about doing some meeting icebreakers or or before going chit chat in the beginning of the meeting to go right down to business? Or does the team want to have more chit chat just because you're not seeing each other in the office and we don't have the time now to just, hey, how was your weekend? Hey, did you uh, did you catch that latest Netflix movie? And you may want to incorporate those things so people feel more connected. Again, this is part of talk to your team, noting down what works for your team and what doesn't. Now, let's talk about a final and third play here um, that I think is very interesting. And I partic participated out of the broader team that I thought was eye-opening. This is what we call a work-life impact play. And what does that mean is as your team has uh, tried to adapt to remote work and other teams across the organization, you can now uh, invite team members to participate in this to really understand what is happening in terms of your home office life, your role requirements, and also what is the support network that you and your team have around yourselves. Let's dive into that in a little bit more detail on the next slide. So you have those squadrons for each of those different aspects. So if we focus on the first one, for example, your home office life, the, 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 the angles that we have here, the axes are talking about whether you have significant house responsibilities or fewer house responsibilities. Um, if you have kids and you have to cook for them there might, or you have to uh, help them with homework, there might be significant house responsibilities versus you live alone and maybe you just have a dog, a fewer house responsibilities. How is your space? Is it a personal space? You have your own office, a place you can just lock yourself in and forget about the outside world, or is it a shared space? Maybe you're sharing um, the same space with a spouse or with kids or other family members. Depending on where you place yourself within those squadrons, it gives others a better understanding of your home office life and what to expect. The next one is related to role requirements. And the same thing happens here. Looking at whether you're someone that's working on complex workflows or independent workflows, and also on the other axis, do you need to have several social interactions uh, for your work to get done or fewer so social interactions for your work to get done? Again, placing um, a, a small dot here within each uh, the quadrant that uh, represents what your situation is can also help other team members better understand. And finally, the support network. This is something interesting because it also talks about what you need to do to be successful. Is your work related to strong relationships or weaker relationships? Do you have a, a stronger uh, workplace network? Maybe you're recent hire at a company, you have a weaker workplace network. This, especially if you are a people manager, helps to get a better understanding of the type of support that a certain employee might need. As you run this play and with your team, it's also interesting if you start bringing people from other sides of the organization. So if you collaborate with product managers, if you collaborate with sales enablement, other marketing professionals, and everyone has a better understanding of each person's life uh, situation. Now, all of this is interesting, but what exactly do you do with that information? And here's the next step that is very important, which is let's transform all of those insights and those discussions into specific action items that you and your team can take. And you can divide that, as I'm showing here on the screen on an example, on certain columns here. So what is something that I can do uh, and or change because of my situation? Or is there something that we as a team can do to better support each other? Is there something that we can try as a team and support that we may need from our company also to get going and to do things better? 
So as an example, you see here, maybe uh, I'm, I'm getting video fatigue when I have more than three hours per video per day. So I'm going to ensure that some of my meetings are gonna become walking meetings. Maybe one-on-ones with my manager. I can ask, hey, can I just dial in with my phone? I don't need to share anything. We can just walk around. If you're managing teams, you can also ask your direct reports to do the same thing. And everyone is gonna thank you for not having to jump on another Zoom meeting. Another aspect here is what can we do to better support each other? Maybe it's something about, oh, let's respect our lunch hours so we all can have time and we can have lunch. Or maybe that's not a problem for the team. Let's do something else. Or maybe um, we need to schedule some time for us to have the ability to really think without any meetings and block like focus time for each of, uh, each of us. And we are going to respect each other's focus time and not override those times with meetings. And maybe something interesting is on the last column here on supporting that we may need from our own company. Um, maybe we need to ask for a laptop stands. We need to ask the company, can we have a bigger monitor or can we have something else, stand up desk? What else can we do as a team or what should we ask the company to help us? And this is a great exercise to get everyone involved in how can we become more effective, which in turn is going to increase the team's productivity. These plays and a few more plays you can find online at atlassian.com slash team playbook. You can read through examples, you can download templates and guidance on how you can run these plays with your own teams. This is the first aspect of creating the culture of collaboration. Now let's dive into something else. You create the, the team culture and you start understanding how to better work for more productivity. Now, how about engaging in some virtual team building exercises? And this is super interesting because now we can look at more of the fun, right? Like there's great work, but how about the play aspect? So teams can uh, continue collaborating, getting to know each other better, especially if you're inviting more people that you collaborate with that traditionally wouldn't come to, let's say, an offsite that you're doing with your team. And you can sign up for a number of different vendor uh, coordinated uh, classes and events such as virtual wine tastings. You can even have a virtual art class. Uh, and that means um, there's someone shipping art supplies to people in your team and then showing up as a structure to guide everyone through, let's say, a water coloring session. And then everyone at the end shows up, uh, shows up to the camera, uh, their best effort, or even a magic show or a comedy show uh, that get everyone laughing around the theme. Or you might even have uh, some people uh, around the company and your team itself, they're super creative. Maybe someone wants to host even like a uh, trivia game using Kahoot or another online uh, trivia app. Maybe someone's really good at origami or they're passionate about yoga or our workout session. And I've been um, uh, in places where we have a team member like at 7.30 a.m. in the morning. She's like, okay, every Thursday I'm going to run my yoga session. Who wants to join me? Here's the Zoom link. And everyone who wants joins that or uh, cool, cool things that you can do with your team. And that creates opportunities for interaction. And, and collaboration that you wouldn't have otherwise now in this lockdown aspect that we're living in our lives. And now finally, let's celebrate failures. And this is part of looking at um, a concept called psychological uh, safety across your team, which is let's talk about it's okay to have failures. It's okay to do things wrong. It's okay for sometimes, you know, you're not, it's not a good day for you. You're, you've had too many Zoom meetings and the next Zoom meeting, something happens. And, you know, this is, uh, a few of the things that you probably have seen around, right? Uh, people floating around some Zoom bingo cards and we have all been there when you're trying to talk and your phone is on mute and you didn't realize that or you're pulling up a slide that's, oh, it's the wrong deck and you have to shift through things because you were hurried into the meeting. It's okay. And the important thing here is if you are a people manager, have people looking up to you and how do you take care of those things, it's good to laugh at yourself. One of the things I was doing at a previous company is we were starting our weekly team meetings with 
one weird thing that happened at the, uh, the, the Zoom call last week, and it could be anything. And we had a lot of interesting and funny examples from babies uh, jumping into someone else's laps to someone um, uh, spilling uh, coffee on, on their laptop. It doesn't matter. It's just like you take things easier and you tell people it's okay. It will happen to me. It will happen to you let's move on, let's have a good laugh. And by this, you create that safety of, okay, it's fine to fail. It's also good if you bring this culture of it's okay to fail into the other areas of the business that you're running, into serious meetings and things happen and you take people aside and say, it's okay, that's not a problem. I think this is all we have time for at the moment. So I want to thank you so much and remember to go to atlassian.com slash team dash playbook and look at more work in place. If you want, feel free to connect with me. If you have additional questions, reach out to me. I'll be happy to share with you additional examples and best practices that I have seen that work to create remote work efficiency. Thank you so much.